I learned a lot of things about ballooning, especially at the end of this balloon flight around the world I did with Brian Jones, when I took this picture. The window was frozen because of the moisture of the night, and on the other side, there was a rising sun. So you see that on the other side of ice, you have the unknown, you have the non-obvious, you have the non-seen for the people who don't dare to go through the ice. And there are so many people who prefer to suffer in the ice they know instead of taking the risk of going through the ice to see what there is on the other side. And I think that's one of the main problems of our society. We learn, maybe not the famous TED audience, but so many other people learn, that the unknown, the doubts, the question marks are dangerous. And we have to resist to the changes. We have to keep everything under control. Well, the unknown is part of life. And in that sense, ballooning is a beautiful metaphor. Because in a balloon, like in life, we go very well in unforeseen directions. We want to go in a direction, but the winds push us in another direction, like in life. And as long as we fight horizontally against life, against the winds, against what's happening to us, life is a nightmare. How do we steer a balloon? By understanding that the atmosphere is made out of several different layers of wind, which all have different direction. So then, we understand that if we want to change our trajectory in life or in a balloon, we have to change altitude. Changing altitude in life, that means raising to another psychological, philosophical, spiritual level. But how do we do that? In ballooning or in life, how do we change altitude? How do we go from the metaphor to something more practical that we can really use every day? Well, in a balloon, it's easy. We have ballast. And when we drop the ballast overboard, we climb. Sand, water, all the equipment we don't need anymore. And I think in life, it should be exactly like this. You know, when people speak about pioneering spirit, very often they believe that pioneers are the ones who have new ideas. It's not true. The pioneers are not the ones who have new ideas because new ideas are so easy to have. We just close our eyes for a minute, we all come back with a lot of new ideas. No, the pioneer is the one who allows himself to throw overboard a lot of ballast. Habits, certainties, convictions, exclamation marks, paradigms, dogmas. And when we're able to do that, what happens? Life is not anymore just one line going in one direction, in one dimension. No. Life is going to be made out of all the possible lines that go in all the possible directions in three dimensions. And pioneering spirit will be each time we allow ourselves to explore this vertical axis. Of course, not just like in the atmosphere, in the balloon, but in life itself. Explore this vertical axis, that means explore all the different ways to do, all the different ways to behave, all the different ways to think, before we find the one that goes in the direction we wish. This is very practical. This can be in politics. This can be in spirituality. This can be in environment, in finance, in the education of children. I deeply believe that life is a much greater adventure if we manage to do politics without the trench between the left and the right wing, because we will throw away these political dogmas. I deeply believe that we can make much more protection of the environment if we get rid, if we throw overboard this fundamentalism that some of the Greens have showed in the past and that we can aim for a much higher spirituality if we get rid of the religious dogmas. Throwing overboard as ballast to change our direction. Well, these basically are things I believed in such a long time, but actually I had to go around the world in a balloon to be invited to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear that it's not easy to know which ballast to drop 
and which altitude to take. Sometimes we need friends, family members, or a psychiatrist. Well, in balloons, we need weathermen, the one who calculate the direction of each layer of wind at which altitude in order to help the balloonist. But sometimes it's very paradoxical. When Brian Jones and I were flying around the world, the weatherman asked us one day to fly quite low and very slow. And when we calculated, we thought we're never going to make it around the world at that speed. So we disobeyed. We flew much higher and doubled the speed. And I was so proud to have found that jet stream that I called the weatherman and I told him, hey, guy, don't you think we're good pilots up there? We fly twice the speed you predicted. And he told me, don't do that. Go down immediately in order to slow down. And I started to argue. I said, I'm not going to do that. We, we don't have enough gas to fly so slow. And he told me, yes, but with the low pressure you have on your left, if you fly too fast, in a couple of hours you will turn left and end up at the North Pole. <laughs> and then he asked me, and this is something I will never forget in my life, he just asked me, you the good pilot up there, what do you really want? You want to go very fast in the wrong direction or slowly in the good direction? <laughs> And this is why you need weathermen. This is why you need people with long-term vision. And this is precisely what fails in the political visions we have now, in the political governments. We are burning, as you heard, so much energy, not understanding that such an unsustainable way of life cannot last for long. So we, we went down, actually. We slowed down. And we went through moments of fears because we had no idea how the little amount of gas we had in the balloon could allow us to travel 45,000 kilometers. But we accepted to have doubts. We accepted to have fears. And actually, this is where the adventure really started. When we were flying over the Sahara in India, it was nice holidays. We could land any time and fly back home with an airplane. In the middle of the Pacific, when you don't have the good winds, you cannot land. You cannot go back. That's a crisis. That's the moment where you have to wake up from the automatic way of thinking. That's the moment where you have to motivate your inner potential, your creativity. That's when you throw out all the ballast, all the certainties, in order to adapt to the new situation. And actually, we change completely our flight plan. We change completely our strategy. And after 20 days, we landed successfully in Egypt. But if I show you this picture, it's not to tell you how happy we were. It's to show you how much gas was left in the last bottles. We took off with 3.7 tons of liquid propane. We landed with 40 kilos. When I saw that, I made a promise to myself. I made the promise that the next time I would fly around the world, it would be with no fuel independent from fossil energies, in order to be safe, not to be threatened by the fuel gauge. I had no idea how it was possible. I just thought, it's a dream, and I want to do it.